Hi, Ryan. I'm so excited that we get to talk to you today. Um, Hi. I have been listening to your Elton John cover for the last few days. Um, first off, great choice of song. But Thank you. Congrats. By the time this interview is live, it will be out in the world. Um, what made you choose this song? Um, so it was kind of just a lot of things. Part of it was like coincidence, but at the end of the day, it was like just a feeling. It was like a this song, like. I don't know kind of where I was at at the time because I made it over a year ago now it was like in October 2020 and um yeah at that time I was like it was like the thick of COVID and um everything was just kind of up in the air and I my project was pretty much done and I was just waiting for it to like kind of roll out so I was in a place of just kind of messing around and seeing what kind of things I'm like gravitating towards artistically um and yeah I posted um I posted a cover just on my Instagram using this filter that gave me like a cool like reverb and then one of my friends slid up and was like you should record this and I was like yeah that'd be really fun to re like record a cover up so I did it and um, I sent it to my friend Daniel, who I work on a lot of music with. And um, yeah, he kind of just like took my um, tracks. Sorry, my cat is like crawling off. We always welcome <laughs> pets in interviews. This is amazing. <laughs> well, this is Indigo. Oh my God, hello. She's a little, she's she's perfect. A little chiller. Yeah, but anyways, it's a little distracting for a second. No worries. Help my ADHD. <laughs> I, I was just going to uh, say my five answers were enough for the day and I'm like, <laughs> sewn back out. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, like, so he just kind of brought it home, put all the glitter on it. And we like slowly just throughout the whole year worked on it and updated it as we felt like we needed to. Um, it was cool because like, at the time too, I was just like listening to that song a ton and that kind of played into um, like why I did it. But kind of the reason was I was just like relating to it really hard. Cause yeah, like I said, it was thick of COVID, like my project was done and I was only signed for one deal or for one like EP. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like, just like, fingers crossed hoping like things went well but it was starting to like it was like angels and demons like colliding like I have all this opportunity and potential to ahead of me to like fulfill and whatnot but the like risk factor I guess was slowly like I wasn't sure if it was gonna like overcome it and I was so yeah I, I hit like the thick of that and I was like thinking about moving back home and like all this crap, like my whole life was just like kind of a gray area and it was like all the lyrics. I never knew what that song was about until I'd like witnessed that like adolescent like time of like moving out. And then like kind of the song talks about like returning to your roots or just like finding yourself. It's not super, specific but like mm -hmm. it's kind of along those lines it's like I'm who I am and like I'm not who anyone else says I am and you know that's what I'm chasing and I'm chasing my best case scenario whatever that is so <laughs> I think the fact yeah. that it's not too specific is also good because I mean it can apply in so many different ways to so many different people and that's what what's so cool about music um, yeah. but in your journey, it's kind of cool because moving forward as an independent artist, it's like this new step and it can either be scary or really exciting. Um, how are you feeling about that so far? Um, there's definitely like, I think I'm past the scary part of it, but mm -hmm. I mean, my whole like experience with my first deal was like, 
like just because of COVID and my team was kind of spread out, like we couldn't like really meet and like properly lock in on things. So it wasn't anyone's fault other than just like the way the world was, but it was, it kind of felt like I was independent in a way because I was the only person on my team that lived in LA. My like a and R was in Nashville and like the rest of the team was in uh, New York. So um, it was like very limited contact, um, unfortunately. But I mean, going into it, it was exciting because um, like, yeah, Warner was like putting me on this new, like revamped East West Records uh, that they had like kind of, yeah, revamped to be like a development label and uh, yeah I was excited I was like cool I'll like just graduate this and then like I'll be on the major but yeah didn't work out that way and looking back I'm like thank god because like going into that deal like I'm a completely different person than I was going out of it and um, my perspective on life and the world and um, just like art in my especially my own has like totally changed and um yeah that and for all those reasons i'm like so excited for what's next because i kind of have like like a perfect like fresh start almost like Mm -hmm. um so yeah it was like cool i was like i don't i don't have to pay for any of this and now I'm getting my master's back and um all I have all the cards back so it's like I'm I'm chilling so you don't have to pull a Taylor's version and re-record everything to release it yeah exactly (laughs) yeah and that's a like other thing is I've um going even going into that deal I was like we saw we made sure we signed like short term so I wasn't Mm -hmm. locked into anything in case something like covid and all that came with it did happen um so like you know we gave it the trial run and it went beautifully considering like all the factors against Mm -hmm. us and my whole team um and but yeah like i i've come out of it like i don't know it's kind of like graduating middle school and then like you know you're figuring out or even like just high school and then you're figuring out college and like you can go out of state or you can go to a small community college, you know, kind of linear to like indie labels. And then you can kind of get a bit of a platform under you there and then go to grad school or however it works. I dropped out of high school. So this is all just metaphorical. So I have no idea of how it works, but that's I like that analogy though I like that because it's true I feel like a lot of people I mean like my high school they were very serious about how you should only go to a university and like those that's the only option and I feel like a lot of people have that same mentality of like the major labels are the only place to be when really it's not what's best for everybody and sometimes you end up a small fish in a big pond and like that sucks too um yeah so I like that analogy because there's a lot of options and all of them can work depending on your situation and what you want out of it. Yeah. And now it, it even feels like I have a new purpose just because of like observing the way major label works. Like I thought that was like, you know, I was meant to just walk in and like blow up and then like, you know, be here. And like, obviously I wasn't banking on that, but Mm -hmm. I was like, that was like the goal at least like, you know why not Definitely. shoot for the best um but yeah I was you know kind of coming out of it I have so much more of like an artist perspective I guess and like um I know going into my next deal whatever it is like like I know exactly what I want and if like whoever we're asking from can't give it to us we know we can get it somewhere else and Mm -hmm. you know it's like I don't know being in control and like having that like 
Um, I also have like a big sense of like originality back too, because there's not so many voices like, you know, having say over like this or that thing or like, oh, we don't have budget for that. Or like, you know, cause now mm -hmm. I can just like figure out how to make it happen one, one way or another. And like, luckily I have great friends too, who are like, um, honestly, like I, yeah, the only people I work with now are friends. So that's a plus. I actually um, wanted to ask you in terms of originality and being able to do what you want. You had an EP that you were working on that got kind of left behind as you ended up releasing uh, King of the Basement. Is that something that you might actually revisit those tracks and bring them back? Um, yeah, so I actually, I've been kind of working on some reproductions of uh, my song Walls. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I'd really love to put that out next year. My cat is trying to get into a drawer. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's been, um, so yeah, I kind of had like a whole like project of songs that I was like ready to like, I guess revamp and like put out there, you know, like mm -hmm. make them not just demos. Um, and yeah, I was honestly really tied to those songs for a while and like as soon as like like there was one song I wrote that yo what is why do you have to do this while I'm on a call the cat's like I don't understand why you're not interviewing me they're chill is, all day until I start doing something and then but <laughs> so sorry it's all um, good no worries so yeah i just um it's kind of that was like just another thing i got to learn from and now looking back i'm kind of glad those weren't my first you know batch of songs because even if i want to go in on them later slash now mm -hmm. um like i have so much more experience and like just maturity with how i um want to like uh craft my projects i guess from now on so um yeah that's one i for sure i'm like planning on re-releasing is walls because that, that was like the first song i wrote that i'd like i wrote and produced it like in my basement um you know in the midst of the king of the basement era and yeah it was like the first song i like finished it and was like whoa i have a I have a purpose. Like, okay. I got so sick. I could do this a little bit. Sweet. And it was like, cause it was like, I was making a lot of like, kind of, it was either straight down the middle, like pop or like, sh like I, I, I came from like a jazz band, marching band background or so it was a lot of like classical and like more like compositions than like songs. And I used to like, make little like string arrangements and stuff. So I wanted to like bridge the two kinda, which I think I got, I started to find a groove in with King of the Basement. Um, but yeah, that, that song was like specifically like, I was just like, yeah, like I, that's success. Like, cool, like I wanna yeah. keep going then, you know? So yeah, it's great. I'm excited. Um, I have to ask quickly, can you hear that noise or is it being muffled by this? I think it's being muffled. I hear like a little bit. It sounds just like a rapper like being crunched in the background oh, okay. or something. It's uh, my upstairs neighbor drilling into the floor. <laughs> okay. So oh, yeah, I'm it's, sorry if it gets louder. <laughs> sounds nothing like that, but it's it's not a big deal. Okay, good. Um, good. So hopefully that doesn't get louder. I just wanted to <laughs> ask before you thought I was like, had chainsaws going in here. Um, <laughs> no, you're good. So with these past songs that you still have in your back pocket and the freedom ahead of you of having the option to do literally whatever you want, um, have you started working on your next project? And or do you kind of know what it's going to look like already? I have. And I'm 
really excited about it. I'm, I'm scheming, you know? Um, it's still pretty like early in the process. Like we're still kind of figuring out um, like, like how we want to go about it really. Cause like, you know, with like record deals and stuff, like um, wanna, I want to get like a good marketing budget because I have like, like it's a very, the idea ties into like what the music videos will be and all the visuals we provide with it as well. So it's all like a big part. And it's like, it's a concept album pretty much. Um, and uh, yeah, I wrote, I think throughout COVID, like I had pretty much all the songs for my first EP done. Um, and as soon as I started finishing that, you know, just like writing, cause like that's, it's the only thing I'm good at is music, you know, it's like, or it's the only thing I particularly excel at is just anything music. So even when I don't have anything to do from like management or whatever, like I've loved to just sit and like make little beats and whatnot. Sometimes it turns into songs and yeah. So throughout COVID, I think I wrote like 200 new songs Jeez. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of in the middle of like, I haven't narrowed down to like 30 roughly of wow. like the ones I want to move forward with. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm kind of in the middle of like all the trimming mm -hmm. of like, I don't know. I was telling someone the other day, I'd like reached the expanse of like ideas and like brainstorming. And now I'm like, okay, there's enough here to start you know, chopping mm -hmm. away at shit. So um, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited for the, for this next project. I'm like, I'm wondering if I should say any more about it, but. Yeah, I don't uh, want, I don't want to make you uh, we'll share there. too much too soon, but this yeah. is exciting to know that it's, it's on the horizon. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, going into this project, you do alongside having all the freedom in the world, you have the knowledge now of whatever you've picked up from the label, from managers, from everybody you've worked with. Um, is there any new information or ideas or things that that are helping you with this next this next release process? Yeah, so many. Um, I mean, first off, was kind of so kind of how I set up the first EP um was like like going from by the track list like it kind of goes like more like the poppy stuff I do like bops starts with uh the friend space and then pillow and bad texture and insurance and then it kind of slowly gets like darker and moodier throughout the project and then like king of the basement is like fully like a weird like psychedelic kind of song, I guess. Um, and, or I guess it, I can't, I can't remember the track list. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, yeah, it ends with King of the Basement, that's right. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I, was trying to, I was like talking about it so intellectually. You sounded so confident, like you knew yeah. exactly, and, and I was then like, your eyes went, uh. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, ends with King of the Basement, and that's like, a lot of synth and like guitars, even like Sorry. Um, that song was like kind of like in the psychedelic rock, like Pink Floyd space. So like a lot of this next project, like sonically is more, kind of dips more into that, I mm -hmm. guess, and keeps like, I guess, um, uh, just like, slowly evolving into that like space so I'm always a fan of like dynamics and making that interesting even on a whole project like you know you want your fast songs you want your slow songs your medium whatever yo she's, she's at it again 
will you chill, please? Just for like 20 minutes. Thank you. You're so cute. That's the problem <laughs> with cats. You can't even get mad at them for that long. I'm just like, you know, it's in their nature. What do you want in there, bro? Get out of here. Okay. I think I've scared them off for, I think I bought us some time. Okay, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah. Um, yeah, sonically, it does get like more psychedelic. A lot of the concepts are um, based in psychology. So I've actually been like studying a psychology textbook. Oh, that's to, like, cool. Kind of make sure I'm like, um, like just observing things right because it's always been a like just theme in my life is trying to like understand people and why because I've always you know I'm honestly like really like confident in who I am now but like in like high school and stuff I was always kind of just like I considered myself socially awkward and um <laughs> what do you want i think she just wants attention that's what i'm so saying. sorry like <laughs> but um yeah i think um so yeah that's like where a lot of my like writing is inspired from is like the experience and then like the processing of it and then like my conclusion of what happened Mm -hmm. Oh my god. You they don't they've never done that with the that specific like drawer. I don't know what they want to be the stars of the show and you know what? I get it. Yeah. It's we okay. all have our moments. Yeah. She's so selfish. Like just let me let me have my time, you know. This is why just I don't have pets. I was like, can't have anybody here. Interviews. I know. <laughs> Well, they're usually like the best and just like, mm -hmm. like I've never had to like, like babysit them like while I'm trying to do something. <laughs> but apparently today they're, they're just, you know, they woke up different. But anyways, not to keep, you know, trying to stay on point here, oh. trying to stay concise. Um, so yeah, a lot of the, ideas are like based in psychology and like my observations and like my heart's desires you know to work things out find balance in things so like it's kind of like yeah each concept is or each song is like representative of like a feeling and like but not even just like one feeling but like specific like like versions of a feeling you know and like I sh you know sh like a lot of people struggled with like mental health and like depression anxiety trying to make sense of that and also like understanding it's kind of like a weird just like chemical imbalance in your brain and it's like kind of weird that you, it, you're like can I just like not help how I feel like Mm -hmm. and that was kind of how how I'm feeling came about originally it was just me like I didn't I didn't know what anxiety was like for a long time I would I just knew I felt like shit like mm -hmm. a lot <laughs> like frequently out of nowhere so um and yeah I would just but yeah it was just like I didn't know how to talk about it or express it other than like music because it, it I didn't know it was anxiety so how could I process that and that's why I wrote how I'm feeling it was just like like why can't I stop my brain why can't I like just feel good about things like mm -hmm. what the hell like I love life it's like I see so much beauty in the world but like I just can't get myself to feel you know the way I want to feel what's up mm -hmm. so yeah um so yeah that was kind of the you know, King of the Basement was me kind of breaking into the initial, like, more of the innocent side of things where I'm like learning about these things and feeling them for the first time. And then, yeah, this next project is like, more like about 
how I've grown and continue to like learn how to make sense. And that's just, yeah, like that's one side of it. And it's also like, as far as like other ideas that are feeding into it too, is like, um, like, um, this isn't as much of a conceptual thing, but, um, like, I guess, uh, trying to find, like, squeeze out every bit of like potential I can in every song and even down to just the track list, you know, I'm kind of mm -hmm. trying to keep it as like 10 songs. And if they don't, you know, kind of just competing them against each other in my brain, like, and if they don't, if they fall under the 10th, 10 song line, you know, I'm like, sorry, song, <laughs> hate to do it, but like, you just didn't make the cut. And uh, I think that's like something I observed in listening to all my favorite music. Like all my favorite albums are like 10 song albums and like, it's no skips. There's no like, you no know, filler. room. Yeah, there's no room for like you to get bored. It's like, oh, I can listen to this whole album in like an hour or less. And like, they're all great songs. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of, like I took a page out of like, like Bruno Mars did did it and like, uh, even like Thriller my, by Michael Jackson is like nine songs and like that was like crazy for the time because people were making like twenty song records. But um, so yeah, to wrap wrap it up, I'm just really like, I don't know. This one's all about the art, and um. I'm like, you know, to the best of my ability, it'll be, you know, my own little masterpiece, hopefully. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a, there's something to be said for an album where by the time it's done, you're almost like shocked it's already over. And like, I've been feeling that way lately with the new Turnstile album. It's only mm -hmm. like less than 40 minutes long. And every time I play it, I'm like, there's no way it's over already. You just start it again, yeah. just keep going. Yeah, well, even like, there's a Harry Styles interview when, where he's like talking about, I think like Sign of the Times had just come out. He was talking about the whole like, or maybe the whole record just came out. It was around his first album cycle for mm -hmm. Harry Styles. And he was in an interview and he was like, yeah, we wrote like 150 songs for the record total. And at the time that blew me away. I was like, how can you write 150 songs and then choose 10? Mm -hmm. like that's great but it's like I thought about it for a while and I was like if I I know music well enough to where like if like um I could write a song and I can trust that it's like a good song that like works musically and like doesn't sound bad um but so I know I can get there but what I'm looking for is like the mind blowers, you know, the mm -hmm. like the you know shit that makes you go like whoa, like you know, because that's yeah. all that's all that's driven me towards music is music that music that has made me react that way to it, and it's like first time I felt that was like doo Ops and Hooligans by Bruno Mars, like. Um, I think my grandma had like bought me um, the CD for like my birthday or Christmas or something. And I had this like stereo set in my room that like my stepbrother handed down to me when he moved out. And uh, I was I was in like fifth grade. I remember just like sitting there like all day. I would just sit and listen and be like, this is like good music. And I was like the first time I'd ever had like a taste of like like this is what good music is and mm -hmm. you know this is this is the bar you know this is the goal so yeah. you know obviously I'm not Bruno Mars <laughs> but you know we're shooting we're shooting for Bruno Mars you know mm -hmm. and I'm I gonna... feel like it's a good point that like you can't write those mind-blowing songs like the ones that really ch change your perception of music every single time but if you yeah. write 200, 
you can do it 10% of the time and that ends up being enough for an album so it's like yeah it's like if every 10 songs you write like a crazy like you know you hit that bar it's like why are we not shooting for every Mm -hmm. song to you know be that it's like because at the end of the day it's like I can the very you know the baseline for why I make music is you know because I've I feel things really heavily like Mm -hmm. you know I'm an empath I am a cancer whatever you want to make you know whatever you want to attach the emotional side of me to um probably both um but yeah it's like i i started writing because i didn't know what else to do with my feelings because i felt so irrational to me mm-hmm. um i was like this is stupid like why do i feel this way like like what i was like and i felt like two different people it was like my mind versus my mind i don't know <laughs> it was just like two versions of me the one that was like kind of weighing me down and the one that was like wanting to you know get better and grow and mm-hmm. you know all the things that humans want to do just improve and yeah grow uh so yeah it's like i kind of got off topic a little bit there but uh yeah I've never known what to do with my feelings so yeah if you think of it as like I'm a visual artist like I paint you know and sketch or whatever it's like yeah you got to sketch sometimes and then you get a great idea for like a painting that you want to take a lot of time on but Mm -hmm. it takes you know sketching and messing around with stuff to figure out you know what exactly that is and then even like when you start actually working on the thing there's so much uh, like spontaneous happenings you know that just happen like as you're working on it and you're like oh I was planning on doing that but I'm not going to and I'm Mm -hmm. gonna paint this way or I'm gonna use this color instead and it's like you have so much freedom there it's like it's just like you go off feel and if like you're not feeling it then think about it then if you're overthinking about it go back to feel you know Mm -hmm. it's like and that's I don't know um but yeah so it's like those songs that don't hit the bar you know I can appreciate them and look at them and show them to people all I want but when it comes to like you know what's driving my name at the end of the day it's like mm-hmm. I want my best work out there you know I want everything every little thing I put out to like do well and sound really good and be respected and like yeah like um so yeah it's like I can mess around and make weird shit in my room all I want but um and not to say that can't come out on a record but it Mm -hmm. has to be that weird crazy like just like makes sense for whatever reason and you never Mm -hmm. know till you get there so for sure and I feel like then with all of the like songs that you've worked on that maybe don't make the cut at least you've got extra stuff you can share with people to be like just working on something today Um, yeah I know like even your manager Joe like found you on you now like a zillion years ago and I remember him telling me I found this kid on you now and like it's crazy how just sharing those little bits of of your life and what you're doing you never know who's going to see it or what's going to happen and it's cool how the universe just like brings the right moments together and like sometimes it's literally oh oh, you're good no sorry go ahead I think I had a bit of a delay for a second oh you're good I was just saying yeah like um I mean that's all I chase is those like moments where like I'm like I don't know what happened but this just makes sense like for some reason like I'm being pulled this way and I'm just gonna go with it that's kind of like you know my whole philosophy around music as I've explained is just like um you know let's let's find our best case scenario and that takes 
fallen on her ass a few times, but like, you know, you can't get up if you don't fall down, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, you can't learn unless you have the experiences that you can actually learn from. Exactly. So I'm, yeah, like I live by the words, be fearless in pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. So it's like, like, yeah, I forget where I heard it. I'm probably plagiarizing or something, (laughs) but um, someone's going to comment on this video and be like, see you in court, Ryan. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, I just chase good feelings and it's like, I want nothing but good things for myself and, you know, the people in my life. I don't want drama. I don't want complexity or, you know, I got enough of that in my head, you know? Yeah. I, um, so yeah, it's like when it comes to interacting with people, especially it's like, you know, the slightest hint of drama, like I'm gone. Like (laughs) I do not fuck with it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And it's like, I mean, it's ultimately what King of the Basement was about. It's like this, um, long story short, like, um, I had like a big falling out with like the girl I was dating at the <gasps> like against each other. Oh, hang on. Like this... I just lost internet for a second. Oh, you're and good. We're back, but all I got was King of the Basement was about uh, and just oh, you're good. cut. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. We weren't that far past it. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, King of the Basement was kind of just about me like saying that in in poem I suppose like just like it it basically started with like yeah there was like a a girl I was dating and we broke up and there was a bunch of drama around that and it just festered and blew up in my face and suddenly all my friends were like pitted, pitted against each other and like there was like rumors about me and like other you know my friends like and just like weird just like so like the whole thing was just blown out of proportion and like it literally went on for like months and uh, it like that was pretty much what like yeah drove me into the basement was like 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 I live in I lived in like a pretty small town like there's not a lot of places to go and not too many more people to meet um so it was like I was just like I'm gonna just do me like Mm -hmm. you guys could I I literally like begged my mom to let me like do online school and like um that was pretty much around when Joe found me too and that kind of helped play into that because like she was like oh like he's got like a manager or whatever, (laughs) like maybe, you know, so I convinced her, I figured out like, I only needed like four more credits to graduate. Cause I Mm kind of like, I like overloaded my first two years of high school and like kind of made a deal with my mom. was like, if nothing happens by the time I would graduate high school or, and, or start college, then I'll, you know, not like give up, but like I'll, you know, I don't know, maybe entertain the college thing or like, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. And we kind of, because obviously, like, how could my parents not be a little bit like concerned at first? I was like 16 and I just was like, I had a steady like following and that was all. Like, I didn't write and produce. I was just like a kid singing Sean Mendez songs on, you know, <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's crazy to like, look back at all that and be where I am and like, be totally not where I expected, mm-hmm. but in the best way, like, I'm so glad, like the things that like made me pivot made me do. Cause when I look back at those situations, if it worked out, there's, some good reason why like I wouldn't want to be there now Mm -hmm. so yeah um, it's funny how even though we can't see like the full 
journey of where we're going it's like in the end it it makes sense yeah that's cool. and that's what i literally i my whole like vocabulary is just metaphors <laughs> like i i like talk in metaphors so much but i use this one it's like because it was something that just helped me realize a lot about my own life um hold on cats are racking cats. up oh I've, i was about to you had a metaphor oh yeah the metaphor um I'm like life is stop. a cat trying to break into a drawer <laughs> i'm gonna have to just like they've taken over i'm going to the <laughs> i'm going to the couch they can't it's more just a distraction for me like i don't care that they're doing their thing but mm -hmm. you know so oh, yeah i've had they've been doing construction on my building literally since i moved in like six weeks ago and being on calls my computer blocks out the noise of the construction and everybody just sees me stop sentences because i like can't hear my thoughts and they're yeah. like, is she okay? <laughs> like, please stop the construction. No. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. I was um, me every 30 seconds. I'm like, wait, I'm buffering. Something was disturbed. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, but yeah. Uh, so the metaphor is just, yeah, like life's, life's not a cruise ship. Life's not a speedboat. You know, life's a sailboat. You can't control the wind. You're not in control of like exactly where you're going constantly, but you can manipulate the wind, you know, you can't mm -hmm. control the wind, but you can control your sails. If that makes sense. You're mm -hmm. in control of the trajectory, you know, you're in control of like, you know, oh, the weather's bad this day. Let's go out the next day when mm -hmm. the weather's better, you know, and like, it's kind of like, there's a, there's a middleman of like elements between like, you know, what you want or expect or whatever um, versus, you know, what life just hands you and you have to like, life is just accepting that. And because it's, it's how it is for everyone, frankly, it's like, mm -hmm. but I just me like when I realized that fact, um, it brought so much like peace to me because I was like, you know, if, if you want, you can even pull up the sails and put the anchor down and just chill out for a bit, mm -hmm. you know, not in yeah. any rush. Like I'll just, and then sometimes you got to take the river and then you're just flowing mm -hmm. and then it spits you out and you can put the sails back up if you want maybe mm -hmm. beach, hit the beach, wherever you want. This metaphor <laughs> works so perfectly for where you're at right now with like being an independent artist and literally. Yeah, exactly. Everything is like the whole world is your oyster. You can just do whatever you choose. Yeah. But uh, that's, that's life. That's life. <laughs> um, it's a good one. With everything going on now, do you have any goals that you're like looking forward to hopefully meeting with this record or like whether for the music or just for like I don't know like your connection with what you're doing yeah um so I mean for starters I'm going out on a headline tour in February um so that's really exciting and yeah you know the goal I guess is um you know try to sell it out mm -hmm. it's going well that's great so we'll, <laughs> you know not too worried about how it's selling but um obviously want to give it the best opportunity but more than anything i want to just like put on a show and like fill up the room and um give people the good time they paid for so and you know that's it's such a mutual thing between the artist and the audience that like we're just here to have a good time it's like mm -hmm. so give it to them um so yeah that's and that's where i get to express myself fully through the songs too because it's like when you're recording it's a lot of like 
tedious, like a lot of thinking and a lot of overthinking, unfortunately, but it's kind of the process of just recording and then you get the, you know, perfect result or closest to it. Um, but on stage, you're kind of like, you know, you, your facial expressions, the way you're moving around, you can express so much more there. And I just like, I, ca I can't dance at all, but you <laughs> bet your ass. I'm like doing something like up there, <laughs> like fist pumping or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's for starters. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, my next project will definitely come out next year. Um, um, and I'm kind of slowly realizing what that's going to be, as I talked about. Um, and then, um, I don't know. I really, obviously, I want to, uh, I want to beat all my top five songs off my Spotify, you know, mm -hmm. clear it up, refresh, uh, get some new bops up and hopefully like you know numbers wise they do just as well and mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna do everything i can to make sure it does better so um that's that's another thing um i've been getting in a lot into like co-writing as well and like writing for other people and producing really would love to like try my hand and like like scoring like film and whatnot because that's kind of like my initial background I never I didn't get mm -hmm. to like dive into it fully but like like in high school that was kind of one of my favorite things to do it was like we would like for class we would uh have like little tests or challenges like write a little piece for this based on like he would give us a video clip or like a um like a picture or like words to go off of like moods um so i've always loved like kind of putting that all i picture of just making any music really a picture just like any idea i have i just throw into this pot of like ever ever growing soup that just eventually you know as you, you know, might need a little more salt here and there might need some like rosemary or like maybe even some sweet you know never know but mm -hmm. eventually you know you just gotta taste it and adjust and then taste it and adjust and then suddenly it's ready to serve um so yeah that's kind of it's kind of the goal with everything is just yeah keep pushing my ceiling as high as it can go and um, pushing, you know, fulfilling as much potential in myself as I can. And that extends to the project and all the songs and yada, yada. Oh, and I, I would also love to hopefully play a festival sometime next year when I get into that. Yeah, I feel like, uh... I keep hearing that a lot lately from artists just being like, I just want to play a festival so bad. And honestly, so fun. I can't even imagine how different the energy would be at a festival compared to just like an indoor venue show. Like it's just a totally different experience. Yeah. Well, it's like everything I, everything that's drove me towards music is just me watching someone else do music and like being blown away that like, so so much so that i have to do it like mm -hmm. i just have to like you know and i was like you know like as like i mentioned like doo-wops and hooligans like the, there's a video of me on youtube somewhere i'm gonna regret saying this but i was like 10 years old covering grenade on like a shitty like laptop webcam and I posted it on YouTube like at 10 years old and it's so bad, but you know, I had to like, I couldn't stop singing that song. Like it was just stuck in my head and I was like, I wasn't mad about it. I was, just, I just wanted to sing it and like recreate 
like what Bruno Mars did and like I would try and sing in his same like swaggy accent in his like like just imagine a 10 year old trying to sing like I catch a grenade you know like uh -huh. it was just funny um that's yeah, when that's they ultimately uh when they put out the biopic about your career that's what it's going to start with is like zooming in on youtube and this video they found of you yeah i'm i'm i hope i'll be ready for the day <laughs> i hope i'm ready to accept that video by then if I anything get, you can just unlist it and so be like, like <laughs> i still get so like cringed at it like my mom will be like playing it like, you're so cute and i'm like no that's bad but I don't know. I mean, that's, I've learned that just in the last year, like being 21 and kind of feeling for the first time I'm leaving adolescence. I can look back at like 10 year old me and not cringe. I'm like, oh, look at where you are, little guy. Yeah. So if only he had known good feeling, but yeah, like back to festivals, like I went to outside lands two weekends ago. That was after being show deprived for two years. It wasn't my first show back, but, uh, excuse me. Uh, it wasn't my first show back, but it was my first like big festival I'd ever like been to. I'd been to like smaller festivals um, that were like, like there's one in my hometown, Knoxville, called uh, Rhythm and Blooms, but it's like really indie and like kind of more like bluegrass and rock. It doesn't like really, it completely avoids like the pop side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so getting to go to a festival and I also got to see Tame Impala's, who, who's one of my like just biggest influences just in the not even like obviously his music's like incredible like literally I cry to it all the time but just as a person like what Kevin Parker has been able to do just on his own gives me so much inspiration like you know you know me and my metaphors and philosophies like I believe you know whatever is humanly possible is humanly possible. It's like, if you, you know, if you see a human on a stage and you suddenly are like, I want to be a human on a stage too. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get there. There's a way, you know, and you just got to find, you got to, you know, find your own, of course, but mm -hmm. um, that's, that's life. That's how you find yourself. You know, you just, you know, slowly, as you know, the more you learn and experience, just, you know, you like reach certain moments and you're like, yeah, I'm exactly where I should be, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, you know, be fearless in pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. So seeing Tame Impala at Outside Lands, eight rows back set my soul on fire a blaze that'd but be yeah. amazing <laughs> it was like also like i could see like in more more than anything what i realized there was just like um like festivals are kind of where like the best music like goes to thrive because a lot of like the best best music in my opinion gets obviously like covered up by like pop culture and you know this and that um and there's so much you know like you know uh like anyone with a following can you know sell a tour um but it's another thing to like actually entertain people you know and that's why people throw festivals is because they just want like like the best you know entertainment mm -hmm. they could possibly get and that's why like people freak out when pe certain people are headlining and it's like you know that was like a big reason I went to Outside Lands was like Tame and Paul like I haven't seen him like 
I have to. It's like, mm-hmm. it, but yeah, so that being said, it was just extremely um, inspiring. Even I got to see Lizzo perform. She oh, like yeah. headlined the night before. To be honest, had never gotten into Lizzo, just for whatever reason. But I like, I'd always obviously like heard about her. Like she's right in front of our, you know, everyone's faces because she's, and I realized why, like, you know, that night I was like, wow, like she's like a star, bro. Like Mm -hmm. I was literally like, how have I been like sleeping for this long? Like what? That's what like I miss so much about live music. It's just, there's so much surprise and, you know, just like, what are they going to do? Like, what's the set? What's their outfit? What's, you know, what's the, you know, what's the stage design look like? What's, mm-hmm. you know, there's so much like, oh, what are they going to do? And that's one of the best. It... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was wrapping up, but like, you, like, you know, you, and the, like, when, once the show starts, it's, you're just like blown away and it's nothing like you expect because there's no way to you know prepare for whatever they're about to do because you have no idea so Mm -hmm. that's the fun of live music but go ahead um I think that's one of the best things about festivals is just you know when you go to a show it's probably gonna be a couple of bands and they all kind of fit together there's not as much of an opportunity for music discovery outside of within what fits with that headliner and going to a festival, yeah. you can find a band who's like a huge artist where you would have had to pay hundreds of dollars just to see that one person. And you discover you like Lizzo. You find some underground band. You find something from a different genre that you wouldn't have even thought to listen to. It's like oh, going yeah. to festivals is the best. Even like if you play a festival, people could just be going tent to tent, whether they know who you are or not. They just discover you by accident. And they're like, yeah, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this person. Well, it's even, I didn't. I didn't like EDM music until I went to like an I went to an EDM festival in like Nashville once and like like I got it. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is why people make EDM music. So we can like rave. Like that's mm-hmm. literally all. And it's so fun to just get like drunk and headbang for hours. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the thing too, is like you like experience something live versus like recording you get a whole other perspective of someone's art which Mm -hmm. is like so cool and that's I've just been able to like prove that to myself as I you know play more and more shows and make more and more music so um yeah definitely excited to play my first festival yeah well I mean I'll be keeping my fingers crossed that it's in 2022, but you know, for whoever is watching this, um, what are the best things that we can do as, as fans and listeners to help support you in getting to these next things you want to accomplish in the next year? Um, great question. Wow. Um, (laughs) obviously stream, 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 uh, that goes without being said though um but I guess uh um nothing crazy to ask uh just just pay attention Mm -hmm. because I I do like you know have my own little like secret little easter eggs I'll like plant through songs or like um there's like you know if there's I I make a lot of my art to be somewhat like you know with as many doors open as possible to it as well Mm -hmm. um like a lot of my love songs are like kind of concoctions of like you know three two or three different relationships that I've like recognized like a pattern of like how a certain thing went within Mm -hmm. the relationship and you know so it's like the songs never get super specifics to where it like closes off you know the listener from being able to relate I try and 
you know, you know, to the best of my ability, be as considerate and like, um, not vague, but like, just, I guess, balance between like, like, this is for everybody. And this is my experience and knowledge. And maybe there's a thing or two I've learned that, the, you know, you could take from in there, or even just like, I don't know, when it, especially when it comes to my own art, every little thing matters, every detail, there's a reason I put it there. There's a explanation for it even if it's just I don't know why I put it there I just did <laughs> that's a reason but like it's like I ultimately like you know when I decided to put it in there I surrendered to that you mm -hmm. know idea it was just like just made sense at the end of the day but then some stuff is like oh like that's crazy like it, I don't know like for for example like uh how I'm feeling um is like it's a I wrote it in like odd meter if you if you know that term mm -hmm. basically it's like yeah it's it's not in like f like a four four like syncopated like eight bar phrases and stuff it's like three bars of three four and every fourth bar is four four so it's in 13 eight technically and i love how that felt with the song because it was like almost confusing but the song was slow enough to where like you had to really like pay attention to catch it mm -hmm. but like as far as like like the mood of the song it's like i'm confused and like sad and like um I always struggle with just like hesitating. So I love the extra beat at the end, mm -hmm. all the phrases. It's like, uh, oh, 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 <laughs> okay, you know. But like little things like that, it's like I try and tie together as many things as possible. Like the music is this way because I felt this way. And then that's why the lyrics are what they are. And that's why I chose the sounds that I did and that's why it's at the tempo why it is and blah 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 it's like it's a it's all part of the soup you know mm -hmm. I'm like a little I'm a little chef in the kitchen just it's like oh yeah like it needs this thing let's put it in we got mm -hmm. it if we don't is it do we have a fake version that we can <laughs> get by with cool like <laughs> gluten free <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah just uh every little thing matters if you can make it make sense even if i didn't plan it i'm inclined to be like fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was my intention <laughs> you're right <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's like i left it open for that reason it's like <laughs> right <laughs> well yeah yeah, and that's kind of the goal with this whole next year really is like for the first time I'm kind of like playing from ahead a little bit and I'm not, you know, being dragged behind someone I want to be, you know, like it's like I'm I'm driving. There's mm -hmm. there's Indigo. But uh yeah. Yeah. That's all, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm really excited for everything that this next year has to hold for you and to be able to watch it all happen. And um, thank you so much for making the time to chat with me today. Thank you so much. I love to talk.